Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I am going to be doing the mid-year freakout book tag. Um, I hope you can't hear the air conditioner too much because it's going and my neighbors are mowing their hay. I know I can hear it just hopefully it doesn't come out on the video too much. Apologize if it does. Okay so let's get started with this. Um, number one is best book you've read so far in 2019. So I mulled this one over a little bit and I came up with three and I couldn't pick from those three so I'm just going to go with those. Um, two of them are new releases for this year and one is an actual reread but uh, it's been so long since I've read it I wanted to include it in this anyway. And the first one is a dangerous collaboration and for most of these I don't have uh, the actual book so I'll just put a picture here. Um, dangerous collaboration by Deanna Rayborn. It's number four in the uh, Veronica Speedwell series. I love that series. It's one of my favorite historical mystery series. And the other one is uh, Death in Kew Gardens by uh, Jennifer Ashley and it is also one of my favorite uh, historical mystery series and it is number three I believe in that series and they're both very very good I love the banter and stuff between the characters in both of those books that's what really appealed to me and they're just really good if you've never tried those series I suggest you try them out if you like mysteries especially if you like historical type mysteries and the reread I did was Discovery of Witches by uh, Deborah Harkness and I've been obsessed with this series <laughs> since I watched the show on TV and it had been so long since I read it I really didn't remember a lot about the book and I knew there would be a lot more uh, in the book so I decided to go ahead and do that and I have uh, the next one Shadow of Night so I can hold it up but um, I really really like Discovery of Witches it's a really big these are really thick books and I, I'm usually a little bit intimidated by them but I really flew through it pretty good. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get it all done in a month because me and my friend are buddy reading these uh, one each month until we get it done. The trilogy, it started out like a trilogy but I think there's a fourth book that's just like centered in the world, the uh, All Souls trilogy world and I'm sure if we are so inclined we may jump in on that one too. <laughs> but. It's really good. I'm not going to really like describe what these books are because I don't want to be here forever. But you should check them out if you want to read them. It's, uh, this is, um, it's, it is a series that's uh, set around um, like present day but it has vampires, witches, and demons in it. It's really cool. And so best sequel you've read so far in 2019 and I could go with the two that I mentioned above the two historical fiction. But since I already mentioned those, I will go ahead and do uh, Small Favors by Jim Butcher. I listened to it on audio, and I think it's number 10 or 11, number 10, somewhere around there. Anyway, in the <laughs> Harry Dresden File series, and it was really, really good. Harry, he's always in a lot of trouble. He This time, he owed a favor to Mab the Winter Queen, and so he thought doing this, you know, small favor would be uh, you know not too bad but he ends up in a whole mess and it was pretty good and then number three are new releases you haven't read yet but you want to okay so I have a ton of those but I have narrowed it down to just these two <laughs> and um, that is Kingdom of Exiles and I'll put the pictures here because most of these I don't have books for I have either eARCs or their library overdrive or audiobooks. But I have Kingdom of Exiles by I'm not exactly sure how to say the author, Maxim Max Maxim M. Martineau, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, it's the first book in like the Beast Charmers series or something like that. Anyway, all I know is it's about this lady who uh messes with a bunch of beast and animal weird strange things it's kind of like a fantasy and you know I'm an, an animal person so that one like kind of hit me up and then the next one is 
Little Darling by um, Melanie Golding. And I've heard a lot of good things about this, so I'm really hoping I like it. It's kind of a thriller, I believe. And I don't know a whole lot about it because uh, a lot of times I feel like the blurbs for thrillers and stuff, sometimes they blurb a little too much. But it's a thriller. I like, I'm hit or miss with thrillers. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. And so I'm hoping I like this one. I think it might be like more like a thriller horror -y type, so I'm hoping I like it. Then, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have a lot of those too, but the two, my two favorite ones that I can't wait to get to, they're both in September, and that would be Word to the Wise by Jen McKinley. It is number 10 in the Library Lover series, and then Fatal Cajun Festival by Ellen Byron, and that is number 5 in the, uh, let's see if I do this right, the Cajun Country Mysteries, I believe. And like I said, they both come out in September, so I can't wait to get to those. Biggest, biggest disappointment, I have two of those. And the first one, even though I thought it was okay, I was a bit disappointed in it. Um, the Vanishing Stairs by Maureen Johnson. I really, really love Truly Devious, but I felt like the second one was just the same as the first one, except a different person goes missing or gets killed or whatever it is and it just it really felt like it was rehashing the first book and even though it was a little different it just I was hoping for a lot more and I'm still curious about it and I want to read the next one but it was just a little disappointing for me and also I was so excited about uh, this next one and it is a retelling and you don't get a lot of retellings about this specific uh, fairy tale and so I was really excited about it but it just kind of was a dud for me and a lot of people love it and so if you love it you know good I just didn't uh, A Girl in Red by Christina Henry I really really loved her book The Lost Boys about Peter Pan and so I was excited about this writ Red Riding Hood um, retelling, but it was just really boring, and it had too many unanswered questions. I, I just didn't feel like it got wrapped up. I was, you know, why did this happen? Why, you know, what is the government doing? Um, it just, there was just too many things that just, it was just disappointing. I only gave it like two stars. I was really disappointed. But almost everybody I know is like giving it like four and five stars. So, you know, each their own. It just this one just wasn't for me. My biggest surprise I would say is uh, "Killing November" by Adrian Mathers. I didn't don't know the author, and I didn't know if I would like it. The cover is a little, you know, it looked a little like mafia style color cover with like all the kids on the front and. I wasn't sure, you know, if I was gonna like it, but I really did. I, I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like four stars, maybe. Um, it was just really good. It's about an assassin school, and November has no idea that that's what she's going to until she, you know, gets in there. She has, she's just absolutely clueless, and everybody seems to want to kill her. So, it was pretty cool. Favorite new author, debut or new to you author? So I'm picking a new to me author because this author's been around for a long time, but I just finished his newest series, the, and it, the first book in his newest series, and it's called um, The Never Game. It's by Jeffrey Devers. And I know he is the author of the Lincoln Rhymes novels, the ones like, I think the first one's The Bone Collector, which they made a movie about. And I've always wanted to read him, I just never have. And since this was a new series that was coming, just coming out and everything, I got it all on Overdrive, on audio, and I really, really enjoyed it. And so I can't wait to read some more and I'm gonna maybe check out the Lincoln Rhyme series. And my newest fictional crush. Okay, so he's not really new to me since I did do a reread of this book, but I am picking Matthew de Claremont from Discovery of Witches because I'm just all in love with Matthew and since that is pretty much like the book I just uh, just got finished reading early on this month 
I'm going to pick him for my new fictional crush. And my newest favorite character, I'm going to go with uh, Coulter Shaw from The Never Game by Jeffrey Devers. Um, it's um, narrated by Kaleo Griffith, and so if you uh, love audiobooks, you should try it because he is a really, really good narrator. But Coulter Shaw, he's a, a reward seeker. He's not like a bounty hunter or anything like that, and he doesn't, he's not police or anything, but he's a tracker. He's an expert tracker, and so he uses his expertise to find missing people and things like that. And he usually, you know, if somebody is offering a reward, then he will go to that person and he will ask them specific questions pertaining to you know what they're want you know the person they're wanting him to find to decide whether he wants to take the job or not but basically you know he just really wants to find people and, and things like that he does work with the police like he will contact them and tell them you know hey I'm doing this for the reward but he wants to let them know if he finds um, you know things that he thinks they should know he will bring them in so you know and it was pretty good I liked him he was pretty cool and he's a character that I think I would like to know more about, so I can't wait for the next one to come out. Books that make you cry. I just don't, uh, I don't pick books that are going to make me cry, so therefore I don't really have an answer for this. It's not something that I'm interested in reading. I don't like to read a lot of realism type books that, you know, have a bunch of difficult issues and things like that. It's just not me book that makes you happy pretty much any cozy mystery book that I read will make me happy so I'm picking um, like a couple that I've read th this year uh, something borrowed something mewed by Bethany Blake's one of my favorite uh, series it's the uh, lucky dog pet sitter mysteries I think and then also um, hitting the books by um, Jen McKinley it's the one that got me all caught up on the Library Lover series, and so I'm waiting for that new one that I talked about earlier. And those were both really good. And then number 12 is uh, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year um, or received. I haven't really bought any books and uh, or anything, but. I do think the cover for Dangerous Collaboration is really pretty, so I'm just going to say that. And what books do you read what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, me and my friend is doing a buddy read of the Kate Daniel series, so I need to read the rest of the Kate Daniel series. We're doing like one a month. And uh, pretty much any of my cozy mystery series that I have going cuz I'm trying really hard to catch up on some cozies so I'm working really hard at that and then the last half of the year I really would like to tackle this big boy Stephen King's The Stand look at that oh, it's huge it's like over a thousand pages I may start like reading a little bit a month until I get it finished maybe and also a friend of mine sent this to me and she read it and she really liked it so I need to get to this and this is uh, on this the day of the pig by Josh Mallerman and it's about this evil pig and it's a horror and it's not real thick so I think I can do it but it just looked really cool and I want to read it and there you have it. That is the mid-year book freakout tag. And I hope you like. Ooh, can't speak. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye.